Hey guys. So, may or may not have anybody get on, but that's okay. I just wanted to hop on and be able to, um, large necklace giving me problems. Um, be able to answer some questions that you guys have. And I saw one head pop up. So I'm going to give us just a second. Hi guys. It's not very often that I show my face. But this is me. And I will tell you. I have never streamed. Like live streamed on my computer. And then when I got on here. I thought. Mm, it's probably pretty easy. Mm, negative. Um, so yeah, I had to put my phone right here where my laptop is, and I would love to tell y'all that I cleaned my studio for you, but it didn't happen. I got a little sidetracked, which is kind of my MO. I saw Ann. Hello, guys. Um, so I'm going to give us a second, and I thought I would grab, okay, here's one. I had some questions about submitting to a magazine, so I'm going to answer those questions for you guys. I know his clothes are all summer set. Okay, we'll go with that one. All right, so happy Saturday, you beautiful people. So I wanted to start doing, now that I have the live streaming option um, available and can stream with you guys, I wanted to go through some of the questions that I have gotten that I would like to address for you guys. And so I'm just going to like read the question. And then I'm going to answer, what's up, my friend Lisa, Kim, hey, hey. Um, I don't know what this wild cowlick little thing right here is doing, but just don't pay any attention to that. What's up, Joey? All right, so the first question I have is, how did you first get into art journaling? And if you could only choose one medium or art supply, what would it be? Okay, so this story was captured in Art Journaling Magazine, I don't know, a, a little bit ago. But I will tell y'all how I got into art journaling. Go ahead and grab yourself some tea, or some coffee, or a margarita, or a glass of wine, because we're going to be here just a second, okay? So, I'm going to go with H2O because I'm on camera. Um, so how did I first get into art journaling? So long story short, which typically my stories aren't that short, but we're gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try here. So I come from a long uh, family of creatives. Um, my brother, um, thank you. Um, my brother and I are half siblings, so we share a mother. I tell you that to say this. So, his father was um, very musically talented. He could play any instrument by ear. Like, just pick it up and take off with it, right? And my mom was very gifted. Um, she could read music. She could read the music to play the piano and play the guitar. Um, but not as gifted as um, my brother's dad. So, the reason I'm telling you that is because I kind of want you to know, like, growing up, I come from a, and he's my older brother, by the way. So, he was very musically gifted. Any time that they needed in high school band, they needed an instrument to be played because we were small town, right? And maybe they needed something that they didn't, a saxophone. One time he had to play the saxophone because they didn't have a saxophone and they needed one. So they knew my brother could not read music now. He still can, to this day, cannot read music. But when he hears it, he can then repeat it and play it in a with a musical instrument. And so they gave him the saxophone. 
yeah, that was interesting. And so he come home, and just after a short little while, he was able to play the music. So he was gifted. My mom, I grew up, she would tap lace, if you know what that is, handmade lace. She would do knitting and crocheting and ceramics and porcelain dolls and all the things, all right? And so, um, it just felt like instantly she was really good at whatever she tried. And so, Tiffany, me, on the other hand, my dad could barely turn on the radio, according to my mom, okay? <laughs> so, not at all gifted at any of the above things, right? So, um, yeah. So, I grew up seeing all of these magnificent talents without a lot of really trying too hard to be quite honest with you. Um, and then later on, my mom decided to start doing pencil portraits. And so she, I never saw her struggle. Like it would take her a long time to do a portrait, but it was like instantly she had that talent. Like it was just there. She had never tried to do it before. She just instantly picked it up and it worked. So I would try all of the things and all of it looked like crap in my opinion. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because I had a question about that as well. And so I would just never really try, but the very first little bit when I would try like if I was painting something or whatever I would be like oh it's not as good as them so I would just put it to the side I'd be like I'm not good at this and so I remember as a small girl asking my mom over and over like mom do I have any talent what's my talent and my mom would keep saying You've just got to keep trying, Tiffany. You got to keep trying things. You got to keep working at it. It takes practice. You you know it's you typically have to work hard to be good at something, you know. And I didn't see that. So I would just put it to the wayside. So when I was probably about 14, um scrapbooking was big then. Y'all remember creative memories? And so, I thought, well, this is a cool, like, paper craft. I love paper. You know, love paper, love um, uh, pencils and all the things. I just loved all the little paper stuff. So, um, I was like, okay, so I'm going to start scrapbooking. So, I went to this little Creative Memories party and I started getting my little scrapbook stuff. And so, I started scrapbooking. And that was probably when I was about 13 or 14 years old. And so, the, I did that for a long time. I would scrapbook, scrapbook, scrapbook. Um, and if you remember back in the day, scrapbooking has evolved tremendously, right? So... It come to the point where I adulted and got a, uh, you know, when you're that age, things change. You know, boys, boyfriends, whatever I was into, school. Then I got a job and um, I started getting really, really stressed. So I just put away everything that was creative. I didn't really have any creative outlets besides cooking. And, and I like to cook. So, I would, um, oh, 9 a.m. I'm waking up to me. What's up in New Zealand? And so, I remember um, my career kind of took over. And so, I had a boss um, several years ago. I started art journaling in 2014 or 2015. I think it was 2014. And, yeah, it was 2014. And so, um, I remember him saying, Tiffany, you've got to find a stress reliever. You've got to find an outlet. And so, I had started making jewelry a little bit. Not anything quite immaculate and beautiful as this. But, you know, just little beads at Walmart. And I'll make me a little bracelet and be cute. Because y'all know I like to accessorize. And so, um, my mom was like, well, make me a bracelet. And so, I went and got all the little things. And I would string those little beads up and just put it all together. You know. And so, if you don't know my personality, I'm like all or nothing kind of girl, right? So, at that point in my career, I was living in, well, I had a um, travel trailer that I lived in part of the time due to my work commute and stuff. So, I would have this space and then I would go back home for a week or so and then I would come back and have this space. So, I was working in a really confined area. And then... I got to the point where we moved and we had a home. 
And so I have a lot more space. And when you have a lot more space, you get a lot more stuff, right? And so I started branching out. And um, I remember I was into polymer clay. And so I would make my own little beads. Because, you know, I don't want it, my jewelry to look like everybody else's. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted mine to be real Tiffany and, and real something, something special I guess I don't know so I started making polymer clay beads and I went to this bookstore and this is the info you were at for okay where our journaling came in and so there was a book and I wish I could find that book or I could think of the author um but the book showed a girl that was doing art journaling and she was taking her journaling like um, color palette and then she was making it into jewelry. And so her springboard kind of was the um, the art journaling. And I was like, what is this? What? Uh, what you call this now? What is this all about? So I bought the book, needless to say, and I came home. I'm sure my first journal is probably up there. It is. Let's grab it because we ain't got nothing else to do. Just hold right there, guys. I think that, you know what? I don't really think this is it. Oh, 2014. This is 2014. So, okay, December 2013, I think, is when I made this. But this is not the first one. There must be one other one. But I made these at the same time. And the reason I tell you that is because it's just a children's book, okay? And so, at that point in time, I don't even know if this is a thing or not, but it's called Journal 52. And so, they would give you, like, a prompt every week. And so, um... I think that's like scrapbook paper maybe. And so I covered it and made this book into my first art journal. And this is January the 11th, 2014. Um, and this was representing my um, stepdad who had passed away. And... Um, but yeah, that's like one of my first... Well, it's not my first, but this is kind of one of my first journals and so um yeah you can tell my style has really changed and so this was the first time that I thought like hold on I've never been really good at putting my words like I would have a diary as a child however remember that older brother I told you about if you have one, you already know. They're nosy and they want to get in your business. And so he would go in and read my journal or, you know, the little ones that had a diary with the little lock on it. You know what I'm saying? And so he would, so I just got to the point where I didn't trust it. So I would not write my thoughts and feelings down. So when I realized that I could journal it with images, and with colors of emotion, I was hooked, baby. And so that is a long story, but that is how I got into art journaling. And then it just, you know, your skills just develop over time as long as you put in the work. So long story short, but that was question one. Then the other part of that question is, if you could only choose one medium or art supply, what would it be? One, I guess Neo Color 2 crayons because they're easy, they're portable, they have a lot of color. You can mix water with them. I'm going to go with Neo Color 2, but one medium or art supply. And if it's multiple art supplies, I would say gesso, glue stick, collage stuff, you know, my giblet bags and stuff. Um, and then... Um, of course, paint. You can do a lot with those. And I wish that I had not bought as much. Yeah, I would say paint, um, gesso, glue stick, um, collage bits, some paper, and you ready to roll. Because you can do a lot with that. Alright, so which other artists inspire you? How do you decide which artists to collaborate with? And would you ever consider collaborating with... Um, Kristen Van Valkenberg. Okay, so Mary Ellen asked this question. 
I, um, artists who inspire you. So I love um, artists who make you pause and look at their work a little longer. Um, the people who come off the top of my mind, and I'm not, do, do not let me hurt your feelings because I'm just coming off the cuff with this because that's how I roll. So there are many more. What I will tell you is Orville, mm -mm. Orly Avenary. I took a class with her in Colorado 2019. Amazing person, beautiful energy. Her imagery and her um, the things that she does in her work make me really ponder. And I like that. I like something that makes me think. And so she would be one of the first ones that pop off my head. Um, Jean Oliver's work. Um, I love her work. It's kind of dark sometimes and grungy. And I love her book. I did a, a book review on that. Uh, let's see. Um, Jeannie Marie Webb. I think it's her name. She does beautiful faces. Um, oh, there's so many of them, but I'm just going to say. And then there's one of them on um, Instagram that I really love his uh, color play and how loose and free his marks is. And I want to say his name is Jason Craighead or something like that. Um, I can probably like leave that in the comments, but he really has really, he does a lot of large canvas work, but it's really like neutral and then like a pop of color and like some scribbles and some grunge and some stuff that I really like. So, uh, he's another one. Okay. So how do you decide which artist you collaborate with? I would really tell you it is an energy thing. Um, if a lot of times people ask me. And based on how my um, workflow is and how much time I have to um, be able to do that is kind of how that plays out. Uh, actually, Kristen Van Valkenberg, which I call Kristen Van Winkle, and she knows this, so I'm not talking bad about her. It's just uh, her name is a mouthful, and every time I see it, I change it to Van Winkle. And Kristen, when I saw this comment, I sent it to her. We have a little something going on, not for YouTube, but for something else that you uh, hopefully will see in the coming year 2021. So uh, it's funny that you brought her name up because she's amazing and I love her. And maybe we will kind of parlay our other project into something else. I don't really know. I, it's just more so like an energy thing and people's work that I think really play off. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's really about it. Okay, um, I have another question. I want to do some online mixed media classes and I have heard you mention some. I want classes that encourages me to make a mess create and try something new but i want to avoid the self-help layers because that is just too complex i won't actually create if i have to choose a spirit animal the perfect thing for my life or or one word that describes me make a make sense yes um, what do you recommend? So, your girl right here does have two classes out there. I'm just going to go ahead and say. Um, so, right now, I'm actually taking a class by Karen mm, Ginsenberg, maybe is her last name. Um, it's a um, face class, and it is on Kara Bullard, Bullard's. Is it Bullard or? Yeah, I think Bullard. Bullock, whatever her name is. Um, she has a creative network out there that has a lot of um, options. So what I would say is you said create and make a mess and like really just be fun and creative. So I would ask you like is there a certain thing that you want to work toward? Like maybe it's collage. Maybe it's um, getting better in faces. Maybe it's getting... Like, to try to kind of weed that down. Um, 
so that if it's abstract play, like kind of combine your topic a little bit more and then look at reviews because a lot of people have sites that um, they have lots of different classes and different options. So with my work, we don't really get into any, um, you know, like... Uh, self-help things i just say hey this is my creative flow it helps me through things but um so i would say kind of work down and figure out what you want to get better at and that's what type of classes to take so if i'm feeling like i want to work towards something kind of go in jean uh jean oliver's network i don't recall ever taking a class in the air that really had any um layers of self-help or anything like that so um yeah we, we can talk offline, though. So, let me see. I got two replies on that one. All right. Okay, so, my question is, when you remodeled your studio, did you change the way you organize your paper scraps like your paper ephemera? You did a video eons ago, and I was wondering if you had a new revelation. No. <laughs> so, what I will tell you is, I have whittled it down to, let me grab this. To be the top of my Raskov cart is my sheet. Hold on a second before I tear my sewing machine off the cabinet. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, so here is the, I don't know if y'all see it, my Raskog. And so in the top of this is this bucket, which has all of my giblets. Okay. What I did find out, I tried to organize those in a manner that would be like color color coordinated or whatever and i realized that's not how i work i work best when i have just randomness into a you know bag and i just pour it out and kind of look through it that's what strikes tips fancy um when i did the color coordinated thing although it was beautiful it just did not really spark um anything inside of me now in these cabinets back here i have all of my vintage vintage letters and stuff like that from that are like lots and lots i have lots and lots of vintage letters letters i have lots of like um vintage black and white photos that I can just come in here and make a mess and I feel like when I move my hands like this through the things that it actually sparks creativity. Um, I have like parses and par parts and pieces of ledgers that are pretty dilapidated and like vintage papers in this. Now in this white thing over here, I have, um, Lord. I'm about to break some. I've got like a lot of um, uh, the indigo dyed papers that people have sent me. I've got painted papers. This drawer right here has a bunch of um, eco dyed papers that I've done. And that's in my second drawer. So if it comes down to like big... And then it goes on from there. And so all of those are like big whole pieces pretty much that I could go and say, oh, I want to add a rusted piece of paper to this. And I could go over there and I have a whole drawer of rusted paper. But now if I have torn it or it has made its way over here, it's probably in this containers um, that, I, that I have lots of different you know, like stacks, and I could just grab a stack, and that will spark my creativity. So, I'm not very organized when it comes to all of my paper things, and then I have another drawer, because I stand up to work a lot of times, so this chair is in here if I want to sit, but I have a high table that you guys are kind of camping out up there, but I have a whole thing down here that has giblets of, like, scrap, um, 
fabric as well. And so that seems to work best for me. I wish it was a whole lot more beautiful, but it's what, it's just how it works. Okay, so the next question is, this may be a video in itself, but can you explain the process of how you submit your work to Art Journaling Magazine and your experience with the whole process? Okay, so this is Somerset Studios, but Art Journaling Magazine is the same way, okay? So in the very back of the magazine, it will give you some deadlines and it will also give you if there's a certain call to like this is back in the day this is like 2018 but it you can this is a idea so it's when a deadline for you to use steel magnolias um my colors are blush and bash bashful that's kind of like your thing and so these are themes that you can submit for. And then it gives you a deadline. It's typically always the 15th of the month. So like if you want to get in Art Journaling Magazine by spring of 2021, you have got to get your journal to them by November the 15th. Okay, so you got like roughly a month to decide what you're going to send. Now, for any of the publications that I can recall off the top of my head, I don't think I've ever done but one that was a call for a theme. Typically, I submit a general publication, meaning that sometimes you have to wait a little while, but the only one that I did that was like a theme was I think I submitted one... For tea bags okay and that one was in the gallery of the magazine but what I typically do okay they do not want you to send photocopies they want your real original artwork so here's an example of one that I'm gonna be sending off soon okay what I will do is I will put a little tag or a piece of paper Typically, I do a tag and I attach it at the very front of the mag of the journal. So I'll I will clip it here somewhere so that they will have my first and last name, my address, my email address, and if there is a theme that you're submitting. So typically, like I say, I just put general publication, and then I ship this whole journal to them. Okay. Now, the thing is, is you want to, if you want your journal back, which I'm sure we all want our journals back, right? You need to mail them a check to let them know to send your journal back. So, however much that it costs you to send this, you need to send them a check for them to be able to send it back, okay? So, how it typically, and prepare, be prepared to forget that you submitted it because it takes a long time, okay? So, the journal, the um, magazine that's out this month in October, Art Journaling, I submitted that journal, I just had a brain fart, I don't even know what journal it was, but I submitted that to them back in 2019 sometime. Now, when you're sending a general publication, it depends on the theme and how it looks in contrast with the other pieces that are going in there. So, you may have to wait a little while. Now, they also have an option where you can submit a postcard. So, your check and a postcard. And the postcard needs to be self-addressed back to you. So, once they receive it, they will then send you the postcard letting you know, hey, they did get it. Because sometimes there's been times where I've been like, did they really get it? But I always ship mine through PayPal and I have tracking so I can go in and track it. But if you're kind of on the fence like that, go ahead and do that postcard option. That way they can send that back to you so you can know, hey, okay, they got my stuff, right? And then you just wait and you wait 
and you wait. And they're going to do one of two things. They're going to send it back to you and say, thank you so much, but it was not a fit for us. Now, what I have had them do is if I submitted something to, I've submitted something one time to Art Journaling, and they passed it over to Somerset Studio, okay? And Somerset Studio is by the same company, but they thought it would be a better fit to be in their summer Somerset Studio versus their art journaling magazine, okay? So they may do that. They also may hold on to it for quite a while. I think they can hold up to it for two years. They've had one of mine for, I know, over a year. I don't even remember really what that journal was, I don't think. But um, I know that I submitted it, I think, to... Um, Somerset Studios and I haven't got it back yet, but they can keep it for a while for a special edition or um, a Christmas or whatever. And then what they'll do is if they want you to write an article for them, okay, that's how you get paid is when you write the article. If you were in the gallery of the magazine, you did not write an article, you were not compensated. Okay, so you will get your stuff back, you will be in the magazine, and they will give you a complimentary copy of that magazine, but you do not get compensated unless you write the article. So, with that being said, um, where was I going down that train of thought? Submit it by the deadline. Um, put your stuff on the inside. Make sure you send a check. Oh, they will contact you by email and they will let you know, hey, I, we would like you to write a tutorial or they would like a general article about the theme or whatever. Now, in that situation, if you took a class or you're inspired by another artist's work, that's where you include that if, if one of those pages are selected. Hopefully that makes sense. Like for an example, if this, mag if this makes it into a magazine, I did not make this journal. This journal was by Shelly uh, Shazam. Is that how you say your name, Shelly? If not, I just messed it all up. Sazama, excuse me. Um, so I would give her credit for the, this journal style because it's not my journal. Um, I did not make that. So hopefully that clarifies. But what I would say is they're going to contact you if they want you to write the article. And then they will let you know how many characters they want the article. Then when you submit it to them by email, they will they have, of course, the freedom to be able to edit or change maybe the title. I think they've done that for me a few times and theirs was way better because that is their forte. So I encourage everyone to submit. I would love to see your work in um, Art Journaling, Somerset, or any of their other um, magazines. So that's pretty much how it works. And if they don't want it, they'll just send it back and say, thank you so much, but this wasn't a good fit. And guess what? This is what I want you to do. I want you to dust some shoulders off and just package you another one up and send it right on out. Because guess what? You keep trying, you keep going, and eventually somebody's gonna say yes, okay? So, I think that clarified that. And if you have any questions after you watch this live, or if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, let me know if I need to clarify anything. All right. We're going to keep this train moving. All right. How do you free yourself enough to not judge your work while you are in the middle of creating How do you free yourself enough to not judge your work while you are in the middle of creating? So what I will say, Marissa, is you know that it's going to get ugly. That's why I say work past the ugly. Okay, because there are always times when you think, oh, Lord. Yeah, mm. I done done it in this time. And a lot of times when I'm filming, I'm like, Lord, sweet baby Jesus, what is happening right here? Um, I will say that I've never um, filmed a, 
a piece that I've not put to y'all. Um, but it's always in the back of my head, like, this might be the one, Tiff. This might be the one. But what I will say to that is I have come to trust myself. And how to trust yourself is to put in the work, go into it without any preconceived ideas as to what this is going to look like, and to remember that this is for fun. Like, when I start hearing that inner critic start creeping up and start telling me all the things, and girl, I just be... Whipping my hair back and forth like that on it. And then I say, hold up. Listen here. This is for fun. And I keep reminding myself that, hey, this isn't for everyone else. This is for me. This is for fun. This is, I can close this journal up and I don't ever have to, to um, show anyone if I don't want to. You know what I mean? So, I would say remove the pressure from yourself. And it's hard because I will tell you, and I can't remember if this is where I thought I would talk about that. If you go back and watch my beginning class, uh, my beginning videos, the Tiffany you see before you and the Tiffany you hear in those lives are two different Tiffany's. And the reason I say that is because back then, I was making art and, and trying to make my videos like other people because I thought that was what I needed to do for people to accept me, right? The acceptance that you want from other people. Um, our culture is, you know, to be among people and you want people to like you. And so I would see other people on YouTube and I would... Be like, oh, well, that's what I need to do. I just need to be very specific and very not loud and very just um, not very Tiffany at all. And so uh, it's funny because somebody recently said like, wow, Tiffany, I went back and watched one of your old videos and girl, you sure are different. And this was the same tip. This was me. This has always been me. But I tried to be the way other people wanted me to be and made my art like other people instead of making it for me. And so when I determined that that was what brought me joy was to do me. That's why I always say do you boo. Um, that my whole everything changed. People started being magnetized to me. Like, I felt like I would, I don't even know. I, like, I just felt like I had a lot of people just started, the energy I was putting out, people were automatically coming toward it opposed to me trying to be something else. So I would just ask you, are you, are you, when you're in the middle of it and you start judging yourself, is it because you're trying for it to be like someone else's? Or are you really being authentic with yourself and letting your own art have its vocabulary and it's time to really, uh, really share its voice because if you don't let it you're going to continue to condense it into the box and it's going to be like everybody else's opposed to it being like yours so i don't know if that's the answer you're looking for but the best advice i have is just be you and the people who are meant for you are going to find you and their art's going to connect Oh, Lord. Okay, I just saw a comment, and it went away, and I can't see it. Okay, hold on. I'm going to have to pull it up over here. Okay, the other question was, when can we look for your nuts class? Marsha, girl. Okay, so I'm about to go find myself on YouTube so I can see who what that message was right there. Um, so, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Um, so, Marsha, okay. Marsha, Marsha. So, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Awkward. I got to mute. Okay. So, okay, Marsha. Um, my goal <laughs> is to, uh, my next class is going to be on eco-dying. 
And my goal is because I do work a full-time job. Some of you may or may not know that. Um, but I'm taking vacation in November and I'm going to spend that time, um, filming my new Eco Dad workshop. If everything goes according to plan, I will have another workshop coming out, um, class that will be coming out before the end of the year, um, on Eco Dad because I get so many questions about it. Um, I'm just gonna film it. And so, it, it typically when I, like I told y'all, was all or nothing. Like, I just get tunnel vision. I'm just, like, looking like, mm, okay, what's next, what's next, what's next? Like, I just film, 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 and everything else just goes to the wayside. A lot of times when I'm filming for a class, my husband just leaves because I don't cook. I don't do nothing but just work on that project until it's done because that's just how I am. So, um, to answer your question, yes, I am looking forward to another workshop and class that will be coming out, um, hopefully by the end of this year. So, thank you so much for asking. So, now, Rennie, I finally pulled it up and I see, okay, I was happy to see that you are on Wonderlust Artist in 2021. How did you get that honor? Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> Is that the answer for you? I have no idea. No, so let's see. I don't really know. I just got an email. Um, so what I really think is, I guess like the more popular, I don't know if that's a word. Is it popular? I don't know. But I guess like the most people, The, like, I don't know, like, I, um, I don't know how, but I guess, like, Pete, okay, so I guess, I, I will say what I think it is, but I don't know that that's what it is. So, randomly, I got an email that said, hey, Tiffany, from Cassia, who is the creator of Wonderless with her husband, Jamie, and said, hey, this was back, like, I don't even know when, um, Oh, maybe that's what they did then, uh, Rennie. I did hear that people have submitted my name. And I will tell you, there was an opportunity to put your ring name in the hat. Name in, I think that's the right word. Name in the hat to be a um, teacher for them back in 2019. And I did submit my application for that and I wasn't chosen. Or maybe it was 2018 for their 2019. Yes, that's when it was. And so I submitted my name for that and then I did not get selected. So I do not know, to be quite honest with you, if they kept, um, like, they kept those, you know, or if, like, to your, to your, um, point, it says that people submit names. I do know that I have had people tell me that they have submitted my name for teaching opportunities such as that, but, uh, what I will say is I just got an email that said, hey, we would love for you to be part of this network, um, here's some of the logistics about it, tell me if, you know, if you like more information and then they, you know, send you more information and then they send you a contract and then you are told you can't say anything until it's announced, which is really hard because I want to tell everybody. <laughs> and so I hate it when that kind of stuff happens. But, um, yeah, so I don't really know, to be honest, but, um, it may have been through, through some of the students and stuff. So that was pretty cool. So, um, I think that is all of the questions that I had. I'm just going to go back and look right here because I can see, um, some of the comments. Hello, Lolly, Alma from Los Angeles. What's up? We got Fanny from Belgium. We are all over. Guys, you are amazing. So, if you have any questions, I'm going to stay on just a few more seconds. I would be um, happy to answer those for you guys. I'm pretty much an open book. If I can help someone, um, you know, f I try. So, feel free to um, ask me and I will help you guys. 
What's up? Um, so I thank you so much for spending part of your Saturday with me. Um, I did put on a little bit of makeup um, today because if you saw the orange chair in my Instagram stories, I did go and purchase that chair today. Um, I talk, You guys talked me right into spending that money on that orange chair. And so um, I said, you know what, because now that we're home and all this stuff, I don't really have to um, put on makeup every day for work. <laughs> and so... Um, Oh my gosh. Mm. Surprise wedding story. Oh man. Okay, so I will really quick tell y'all about my wedding story. But first, I'm going to tell you about makeup. So I have gotten to the point where I don't really wear a lot of makeup. Um, used to, when I would go to work, I would wear makeup every single day. Now I typically only um, wear makeup whenever I have to facilitate. I'm a trainer. That's what I do. Um, and so when I have to do a virtual class, I will put on makeup um, for the people. And today I woke up and I said, girl, you know what? Let's put on some makeup and be cute. And I even put my beautiful necklace on that was made by um, an artist here in um, Gulf Shores. She's Orange Beach, Gulf Shores. Um, she was at an art fair. And so I wanted to wear my necklace because I don't really dress up much anymore. So um, that's that. Okay, so a quick story about my surprise wedding. It's really a better story whenever we um are together in real life but um because some of you may or may not ever get to be in real life with me i'll go ahead and tell y'all the story so my wedding was a surprise i'm gonna let y'all sit in that just a minute so it pretty much went like this back in 2010 I think Josh asked me, Josh is my husband Josh asked me to marry him in like 2008 it was 2007, 2008, okay? And I said, yes, I will absolutely marry you one day. Little winky face. And so, um, I, my career was taking off at that point, and I had just become a manager, and I was going all over the place, and I was flying out, and the day that I was supposed to fly out to go on my new, new job training, um, Josh asked me to marry him. And I said, yes, I will marry you in a while. And then in 2000, that was 2007, 2008. And we decided, well, I decided that our wedding was going to be 10, 10, 10. Because I thought that was cool. And why not? And then anyway, long story short, it just didn't work out. One thing, like, I can't remember if his, his grandmother passed away right there. I can't remember exactly what it was, to be honest with you. But it just did not work. So it was put off again. And so when we, he asked me to marry him, he said, well, we can just go to the courthouse. And I said, oh no, we do not. I am my mama's only daughter. And we have definitely got to have a wedding because, you know, as a child, as a girl, that's all I dreamed of was just like being a beautiful bride. Da, 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 da. So anyway, I'm like, um, no. And so I put that off and then I put it off and put it off and put it off. And then 10, 10, 10 didn't happen. And so he kept asking me, please tell me, let's go get married. And I was like, um, no. I was like, do we have to be traditional? Can't we just be in a committed relationship? Is that really necessary? Blah, blah, blah. You know, all the things. And so, um, then, um, I finally told him, I said, listen, I'll marry you. We'll get married. I was like, I'll go to the courthouse with you. And so, uh, because at that point, I was just like, is it really even worth that we have been together for eight years at that point? I'm like, come on. <laughs> um, we were living together the majority of the time. I'm like, okay, we're married, but if you want the name changed in the paperwork, okay, fine. So, um, we went, got our wedding license, we got our wedding rings, and then we were trying to decide when we were going to go and organize it because my mom lives like two hours from here. Um, his mom lives like two hours from here. And so, we we're trying to figure out how we we're going to make it work. Well, one Sunday, 
actually, um, February the 26th, 2012, <laughs> um, we were at church, and it was a Sunday, and he had just worked off of a 12-hour shift that morning, and he had to leave he had to lead devotion in the church on that Sunday. So he didn't get to go home to shower, to bathe, to put on any church clothes. He just had to go directly in his scrubs to, um, to the church. And so, well, he picked me up and took me too. But, uh, when we were there, he was, um, the church was over, Praise the Lord, everything done. Well, we always were on the very front of the um, pew because he did extra stuff with the church. And so, um, that just was more convenient for us. So, what I did was I went to pick up our stuff there to get it all together to leave. And when I picked up, I, everybody was still sitting in the church. And I thought, well, is there a special guest? Did I miss something? Like, what's going on? So, I was like, this is weird. So, I grabbed my stuff, and there was another lady that was a few rows back. So, I went back there to talk to her, and da-da-da. And as I was turning around, the uh, preacher's wife was coming toward me, and she had a bouquet of flowers. And I was like, oh, well, and, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, that's a beautiful bouquet. And she handed them to me, and uh, that's when it hit me. I looked up, and there is Josh. There is our preacher. You know, like in the little wedding thing, like right up there at the front. And I was like, oh my gosh. And about that time, I start walking to him. And he's walking to me. And he had tears in his eyes. And he said, Tiffany, will you marry me today? Well, yes, I will. right there on the spot and um uh, my mama wasn't there mm, yeah so I was like oh my god my mom is not here and um I was crying he was crying I was like my mama's gonna kill us because she's not here and so I went ahead and did it anyway I got married and then um it was very emotional, guys. I've told this story a lot, though. And so, um, when we got in the car, so the story, the, the end of it, right, was um, we got married. They had a reception and everything for us or whatever you call it. We had cake and not really wedding cake. It was just like a regular cake. I did not have any. I do not have any pictures of my wedding. Never had a wedding dress. It was the cheapest wedding anybody could imagine. <laughs> and he's in scrubs. Oh my word, what a mess. And so, I'm sure somebody got pictures that day, but I still don't know where they are. But anyway, and so we went, we ate, we got in the car, and I'm like, oh my word, I got to call my mama. I was like, my mama is going to kill me. And so I called my mom. I had her on speakerphone and I was like, hey, mom. <laughs> I said, you see what had happened was is we got something to tell you. And she was like, um, what? <laughs> and I said, well, um, Josh and I got married today. And she said, um, what I she cussed, I'm sure she did. Like, shit, what why y'all did that? I wasn't even there. And I was like, Yes, mom, we know. And um, and then so I was like, Oh, she's about to really just tell us off, right? And then right at the end, this is what she said. And I said, Mom, I'm so sorry. And she was and she was mad at Josh because she was like, Josh, if you would have told me, I would have come. And Josh said he was so nervous he didn't know if he was gonna get his nerve up to do it or not. Because he said he wanted to do it and like he had it in his mind that he was gonna do it. But whenever he said he just didn't know. Like he he was scared that if he called my mom, told my mom to come down there, he wouldn't be able to work up the nerve to do it. And so um, my mom said, it's about damn time y'all got married anyway. 
So there you go. And now how many years later? Eight years. Yeah. It's been a it's been a ride. Almost nine years that we've been married now and we've been together two thousand four fourteen years. Yeah. So or fifteen years is this year, I guess. November the 7th is our anniversary when we started dating. So that is the story of Tiffany and Josh and our surprise wedding. That was a total surprise to me. So what we said, yes, actually that's what we said was we said, hey, you know, maybe it would be for our 10 year anniversary that we actually do a uh, renewing of the vows and I can actually have on a wedding dress this time. So, we'll see. But, I enjoyed hanging out with y'all. I Now, y'all are so sweet. I will have to tell Josh that um, I shared the, um, the wedding story with y'all. But, I love you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have had a splendid Saturday. And that you use this time to uh, go now make some art. Go get creative. Go um, do something amazing. I'm going to go and probably cook dinner. That's not very amazing, but I love y'all. I hope I was able to answer all your questions. If you do have more questions, um, I can do this type of conversation again. Um, just leave me your questions and I can either clarify some things that maybe wasn't very clear because I did not have any notes. Uh, um, just straight off the cuff because that's how I roll. Um, love y'all and until next time, to live.